Welcome back to Hard Run Box. Today we're looking at another 1440p high refresh gaming monitor, this time from MSI. It's called the the Optics MAG274 QRF-QD. I mean, are they serious with this product name? Is that is that really what they're calling it? There's there's eight letters in there, three numbers, there's a dash. I mean, seriously? MSI, we need to talk. You have this cool new gaming monitor with awesome features and high-end specs, and you want to sell this product to the world and get people interested? Calling it the MAG274 QRF-QD Alphabet Soup is not the way to do it. Seriously, simplify your product names. This one is terrible. Naming aside, there's actually a lot of cool stuff going on here. This is a high-end 1440p monitor to compete with products like the LG 27G L850 and Dell S2721 DGF in that $500 US price range. It has a 165Hz refresh rate, wide DCI-P3 color gamut, rated 1 millisecond response times, and it's got all the usual adaptive sync functionality, including being NVIDIA G-Sync compatible. However, the big news here is that MSI aren't using LG's Nano IPS panel. Instead, this display is using a brand new panel from AU Optronics, which MSI are branding as Rapid IPS, although I couldn't find any definitive branding for it. In any case, MSI are promising 1 millisecond greater gray response times here with an IPS display without using the LG panel that has become the mainstay of performance IPS gaming monitors. So in addition to looking at this MSI monitor as a whole, we're going to be getting a good look at how AU Optronics is going in the IPS market. I'll also just drop the price here right at the start, which is 550 US dollars or 860 Australian. So definitely in the high end range for these specs and a competitor to the LG and Dell monitors I mentioned. There's also going to be a model without the dash QD, in other words, without the quantum dot element to this display at a lower price, but I'm not 100% sure how the panels differ otherwise or what panel it's using. So today's review is of the dash QD model anyway, which is the first to hit retail shelves, and I think it'll be coming later this month in most places. The design MSI are using here is pretty standard for them, so it won't blow you away with stunning aesthetics, but it gets the job done. Basic matte black plastic for the most part, with a few flourishes on the rear, different textures, and of course, some RGB lighting. Thankfully, MSI seem to have dropped the front RGB LEDs from their new high-end displays, but there is still a bit on the back. The overall build quality is... It's only okay, I don't think it's quite up there with the best gaming monitors on the market, but it's by no means bad. The stand is very adjustable with height, tilt, swivel and pivot adjustments, all supported so that's a good range of motion, and the stand is somewhat sturdy overall. I'd give this a pass grade. Decent range of ports, we're getting one DisplayPort 1.4, two HDMI 2.0, and a USB Type-C port that works via DisplayPort Alt Mode. The HDMI ports only support up to 144Hz, so it might have been nice to see HDMI 2.1 support here, but on a 1440p display, this is more of a bonus feature right now, rather than a requirement like it is for high refresh rate 4K monitors. The OSD is controlled through a directional toggle, and generally MSI's interface is easy to navigate, which is nice. In there, you'll find a mixture of gaming and color features, stuff like cheat crosshairs, a black adjusting night vision mode, a refresh rate display, eye saver modes, and so on. I wouldn't say there's anything especially unique in here, but MSI have done a good job of matching the features most gaming displays have these days. All right. I know you were interested in performance, so let's get into it. Just the three overdrive settings here, which is on the low side, so I'm hoping one of them is quality. First up, we have the normal mode, and to me this looks like overdrive disabled. However, stock panel performance is very strong, with the 5.66 millisecond average greater gray response already being suitable for 165Hz gaming. The lack of overshoot at this level of performance is very promising. When moving up to the fast mode, we see excellent results. MSI are able to provide a slightly better than 4 millisecond average experience here with no overshoot at the display's maximum refresh rate. That's very strong and allows for 100% refresh rate compliance. This sort of performance, as we'll see in some comparison charts in a moment, is able to match what LG are offering with their Nano IPS panels. Then we move up to the fastest mode. 
which like on LG's monitors is basically only here to allow MSI to advertise a one millisecond response time. We do see some transitions hitting around the one millisecond mark. However, the overall average is more like 2.3 milliseconds and that's with a lot of noticeable overshoot. It actually doesn't overshoot as much as the similar mode on the LG 27 GL850, but that doesn't make it usable. I still wouldn't recommend using this mode. MSI are also able to provide a great single overdrive mode experience for variable refresh rate gaming. The fast mode delivers great results at 165Hz all the way through to 85 and even 60Hz. We get to keep the same level of response time performance at around that 3.8 to 4.0 millisecond mark on average with a small increase to overshoot as we progress down to lower refresh rates. But even around 60Hz, the monitor is still usable without a crazy amount of inverse ghosting. This is the sort of performance I expect from a high-end monitor, and MSI are delivering it without much issue. Time to compare the MAG274 QRF-QD to other high-end 1440p monitors, and what we're looking at first up is a comparison of the best performance these monitors can offer, so maximum refresh rate and best overdrive mode at that refresh. The MSI model with its new AU Optronics panel is more than capable of competing with the LG laden alternatives such as the 27GL850 and the S2721DGF. Both of these displays deliver around a 3.9 millisecond response time average with no overshoot and that's exactly where the MSI model sits as well. So this is a fantastic result first up and shows that AUO have highly competitive IPS technology for 2020 displays and beyond. What this means is that typically speaking, the MAG274 QRF-QD will be 30-40% to faster than a mid-range IPS gaming display like the ASUS VG27AQ or Pixio PX277 Prime, and with better overshoot handling as well. Aside from the more expensive Samsung Odyssey G7 with its 240Hz refresh rate and the HP Omen X27 with its TN panel, you won't find better performance from a 1440p display than what these new high-end IPS monitors can provide. In terms of average performance, so this is an average of results across the refresh range at overdrive settings optimized for variable refresh rate gaming, the MAG274 QRF-QD also performs really well. In fact, with slightly better overshoot handling at the same 4 millisecond level of performance, I'd say this MSI monitor is slightly better than those that use LG's Nano IPS panel. It's also clearly better than mid-range high refresh IPS monitors, which are more in the 6 to 7 millisecond range on average. There appears to be a lot of headroom with this new AU Optronics panel as evidenced by the average error rate chart. At 4 milliseconds, there's practically zero error on average at 165Hz, which is slightly better than LG's Nano IPS panels. As for dark level performance, no issues here as we're using an IPS display which isn't typically plagued with the dark level smearing we see from VA monitors, Samsung Odyssey aside. At 60Hz, the MAG274 QRF-QD is an excellent monitor with some of the best performance I've seen, especially from an IPS display. This is great news if you want to hook up a console to the HDMI inputs and game at 60Hz. And before you say, well, the PlayStation 5 doesn't support 1440p output, MSI have actually thought of that because the display can accept a 4K 60Hz input and downscale it to 1440p for you. It's not particularly useful for PC gamers, but that's a nice feature to have for consoles. Input lag is strong with virtually no processing delay, a common feature of modern gaming monitors. So what we're mostly left with is the scan out delay, which scales with refresh rate, and the response time delay, which both combine for around a seven millisecond experience. Very solid overall. Then for power consumption, nothing out of the ordinary here. You'll see around 30 watts of consumption when calibrated, which matches other 1440p high refresh monitors of this size. Unlike with monitors that use LG's Nano IPS panel, backlight strobing is compatible with this new AU Optronics panel, and MSI have included it under the anti-motion blur heading. This feature is actually very good. At 165Hz we get a bit of strobe crosstalk which leads to a faint double image, but at 120Hz this double image is very hard to spot so we're left with a clear, crisp gaming experience, especially in the centre of the display which is most crucial. I very rarely recommend people use backlight strobing modes due to various image artifacts, but on this occasion, at 120Hz, I think it's quite usable.
With that said, there are still numerous downsides. You will be sacrificing variable refresh rates to use backlight strobing, and you'll have to ensure your game's frame rate exactly matches the display's refresh rate. This means you'll need a locked 1440p 120fps output to avoid any further image problems, which isn't ideal unless you have high-end hardware, so that's just something to keep in mind. Moving on now to colour performance. The MAG 274 QRF-QD has the widest colour gamut I've seen from a consumer gaming monitor. MSI advertises 97% DCI-P3 coverage, and that's absolutely accurate, beating out LG's Nano IPS monitors, which typically fall around the 96% mark in my testing, but it does go beyond that. You can see here that for all three color primaries, the MAG 274 QRF-QD exceeds P3 to some degree. This allows the display to achieve both 97% P3 coverage, but also 99% coverage of Adobe RGB. You can see the clear difference with this performance versus LG's Nano IPS in that Nano IPS really only covers the P3 color space, with just 87% coverage of Adobe RGB. This makes the new MSI gaming monitor exceptionally well suited to color work with great support for either P3 or Adobe RGB, depending on what you're working with. The downside here is it's the wild west for color accuracy. Out of the box, MSI has done a reasonable job of sticking to the correct color temperature of around 6500K, so there's no appreciable color tint here. However, MSI haven't adhered to the sRGB gamma curve particularly well, so there are some inaccuracies here. There's also no way to modify the gamma in the OSD settings, which is disappointing. As expected, default performance also sees an unclamped color gamut, so sRGB content is, by default, expanded up to fill the voluminous color space of this display. This leads to significant oversaturation when viewing sRGB or Rec. 709 content such as YouTube videos. You'll quite often see skin tones balloon from natural looking to deep red or orange, often giving people the appearance of a tan or sunburn. Having a delta E of over 4.0 here is not great for sRGB content. Unfortunately, MSI does not provide an sRGB mode with this monitor of any kind, or any way to clamp the color gamut. I checked every mode, so unless it's hidden somewhere I didn't see, no sRGB clamp. This is very disappointing as we're now relying on a software profile to create accurate colors, which often isn't supported in various applications. There's also no DCI-P3 or Adobe RGB modes, which would also be required for accurate viewing of those color spaces, given this monitor exceeds both like it does with sRGB. From here, the best way to achieve accurate results is through a full calibration, although not ideal. Results for sRGB content are pretty good with sub 2.0 delta E's across the board, and it is able to fix up some of the issues with gamma for example. We also get generally good results for D65P3 aside from a few problematic colours. Brightness is excellent at around 400 nits peak when in the SDR mode, and on the low side, minimum brightness is 65 nits. The thing most of you will be interested in is the contrast ratio, and I have good news to share. AU Optronics' new fast IPS panel is not hamstrung by bad black levels and low contrast. While this display is still within the typical range of IPS panels, so a 1070 to 1 contrast ratio, we're not wallowing at the bottom of the chart with an 850 to 1 or even 760 to 1 contrast ratio. We're getting at least a 25% higher contrast ratio than the Dell S2721 DGF, which will please buyers, although not in the same ballpark as VA panels. Viewing angles are good, although not quite as good as the 27GL850. Uniformity also isn't quite as good, with some color shift in the center area and a bit of fall off around the edges. A monitor like the S2721DGF isn't perfect either, but holds up slightly better. Bit of IPS glow in the bottom left corner of my MSI Unit 2, but this will vary between units. So I've spent a fair bit of time with the MAG 274 QRF-QD at this point, and I have to say that I'm very impressed with what MSI have put together here. This display provides very compelling performance to both pure gamers after a 1440p high refresh display, and those after a panel that can do a mix of content creation and gaming. This is a true high-end competitor to monitors like LG's 27G850, and it does so without using the standard nano IPS panel we've come to appreciate over the last year and a half. Gaming performance is the star of the show here. We're getting a 4 millisecond experience across the refresh range with manageable, or usually no, overshoot, all with a single overdrive setting. This leads to a great motion handling experience that's in line with LG's nano IPS alternatives. 
On top of that, it provides above average backlight strobing at 120Hz, something LG's monitors can't do, and better black levels that result in a higher contrast ratio. Essentially, we're getting everything a monitor like the LG 27G850 provides for gamers, but with improvements in key areas. MSI and AU Optronics are also providing an exceptionally wide color gamut, encompassing 97% P3 and 99% Adobe RGB, well above what nano IPS screens can achieve. If you do have the tools to calibrate the display, this is one of the very few gaming monitors I've seen that provides an excellent gaming experience and excellent Adobe RGB coverage for content creation at the same time. The only concern I have here are some issues with color calibration, mostly the incorrect gamma curve, no gamma modes at all, and lack of any way to restrict the gamut through an sRGB mode or similar. This is an extremely vibrant, oversaturated, untamed display, which is great for those that can rein it in with calibration profiles, but for those that can't, it might not be for you. Also the name is terrible, like really bad. Naturally, the big question from this review will be, should I buy the MSI MAG274QRF-QD, or should I go for an LG Nano IPS display like the LG 27G850 or Dell S2721 DGF? Based on performance alone, there is no doubting at all that the MSI monitor is at least on par and at best superior to those displays. If you want the best 1440p 165Hz monitor, or if prices are the same, then for most people the MSI monitor will be the better buy. What complicates this situation is the MSI monitor entering the market at a higher price, $550 US dollars. The 27G850 has almost always been a $500 display, while the S2721 DGF is typically a bit cheaper again, I've seen it below $500 at times, although it's right on $500 at the moment. So is it worth spending the extra money? I think it is in most instances, you're really getting three additional things here. Functional backlight strobing, a much better contrast ratio, and a wider color gamut for just 10% more. So that's a pretty good deal in my eyes, and I think most buyers will benefit from at least one of those improvements. But the Nano IPS competitors are still a decent choice, especially at around $450 or less. I also think the MAG274QRF-QD sits in a pretty good spot in the market. Above this, you're really having to look at spending $700 plus on a display like the Samsung Odyssey G7 or LG 27GN950, and both of those are in a different performance class in terms of refresh rate or resolution. So that's it for my review of this MSI monitor. I'm not going to say the name again because I've said it too many times. It's a terrible name, too many layers and numbers in there, so we'll just stick with MSI monitor review. If you're interested in supporting our monitor reviews, you can of course sign up to our Patreon page or our Flirt Plan page where you'll get access to things like display profiles, monthly live streams, Discord chat if you want to ask me monitor questions, all that sort of thing is available over there. You can also subscribe to the channel for more monitor reviews and other PC gaming and hardware related content. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.